What's going on, everybody? Thank you guys for tuning in. It's Coach Cleek coming at you. I got a special guest for you, and I got a special show for you. We're going to have a lot of fun today, okay? I got to put some things out there, all right? But I, I, This is going to be an interactive live. We're, we're going to talk about some wonderful, uh, we're going to have a wonderful discussion on uh, atmospheric change, and I'm not talking about the weather and community building, but uh, with understanding that this is going to be interactive, do understand that there's about a five to 10 second delay from the time that you see something till the time that, uh, uh, from the time, that, I'm sorry, from the time that you post something till the time that I see it, okay? But we will acknowledge it either in the replay or we will acknowledge the comments as they come through, the comments that I can see, all right? First and foremost, it's your motivational speaker, your empowerment coach, your author, and your favorite baker's favorite baker, Coach Clee, coming at you. And I need to know what the energy levels are. I need to know what the energy levels are like. So if you had a good day today, I need you to put a one in the comment section. Put a one in the comment section if you had a good day today. And, you know, I don't believe in bad days. I like to call them character building days because you can learn from them. You can grow from them. They're necessary because they make you appreciate the outstanding days that much better. So if you had a character building day, a quote unquote bad day, I need you to put a two. Looks like a peace sign. Put a two in the comment section if you had a character building day. Put a two in the comment section if you had a character building day. And hopefully tomorrow's a better day for you. I see Gary Grant's on. I see Tanya Lawrence is on. They had wonderful days. They had good days. Good, good. I'm happy to hear that. If you had what I had because I got to sleep uh, to sleep uh, in a hyperbaric chamber yesterday, so I got to, to refocus, repurpose myself. I had an outstanding day today because I feel refreshed. I need you to put a zero in that jump. Put a zero in the comment section if you had an outstanding day. Put a zero in the comment section. It's kind of like this is a bubble. You're right there in the middle of that bubble. Nothing can penetrate that bubble. I had an outstanding day. I'm. Let me see. Can I go ahead and post that right now? Zero. Yeah. Did it go through? There it goes. It's on. Yes, I had an outstanding day. I see Kia's on. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, she had a good day as well. Yep, yep. A couple zeros. Oh, okay, we changed it to a couple zeros. I see a couple people had a good day. I hope I, when 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 uh, the special guest and Shayla come on, I hope they tell what kind of day they had. Also, you're already on the Facebook page. If you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe and like that like button for Coach Clee. We're also on YouTube under the same name. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, YouTube channel, go ahead and do that. All right. We're streaming live on YouTube right now as we speak. We're also on LinkedIn, but LinkedIn won't let me be great. So I can't go live from there, but we're on Anchor and Spotify. So make sure that you check out the podcast and some extra additives that will be on that podcast as well. All right. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I want you to check out the website too. Workwithclee.com. And on that website, you'll see a bunch of different things. You know, I got to do the, the whole preamble. March 4th, and we're coming up on the anniversary of that next month on March 4th. It's a motivational empowerment book will help you find your own breakthrough. We talk about toxic people, toxic situations. We talk about courage, stepping out of your comfort zone, and getting your own breakthrough. It's kind of like a guide for that. That's on the website. Of course, No Shade, All Lights on the website, my second book. Jason Brown, Herb Thompson, Clarence Stokes, and myself, we got No Shade, All Light. It's 25 of our favorite quotes and what they mean to us. So, so over 100 quotes in this book with meaning. The third book I did, which came out early or middle of last year, you know, is Hashtag Grudge, where you talk about anger, we talk about mistake, we talk about holding on to grudges. Holding on to grudges is like holding on to a hot piece of coal. This is a quote from Les Brown, and, and you're expecting the person that you're mad at to be feeling the pains of the effects of getting burnt, and instead, you're getting all the pain in it and, and being injured, let go of that thing and start the healing process. We talk about that on there as well. So many wonderful things are on the website. I see Venus on. Thank you for tuning in. Tag, like, and share. She had a good day also. But I hope you guys are ready for the fun. Some of what you guys wait for, the fun part of the show. Let me see if I can get this up real quick so you guys know what's going on. Because you guys know that it's about to be Shayla's showcase. Oh, and here she comes. Shayla, you ready? I'm trying to be ready. I, I'm in a different location, so things are a little bit different here. Yeah, um, different. You got the, that bouquet of flowers behind you. I do. I thought I would throw them up there. Aren't they beautiful? They are. <laughs> Thanks. Um, anyway, bear with me today. I am not looking at my normal little teleprompter thing, so I'm trying to read very small print. Um, but I did have a zero day. I know you said you wanted us to share that when we got on. So that's the kind of day I've had. But moving into Shayla's showcase, we'll start with uh, a novel by Cy Emery, which is Over the Tracks. It's a must read with themes of race, loss, and friendship. The young adult novel sizzles with action, surprise, and urban drama. The characters will grab your heart and won't let go, leaving you begging for more. You can find Over the Tracks um, on Amazon Books. 
Then we have David Valente Maurice Kennedy, who was a former guest. He has his fourth book out called Bottom of the Fifth. You can get that by contacting him on Facebook. He has a Facebook page. It's author David Valente Maurice Kennedy. Then we have Good Brothers Cafe, which is a one-of-a-kind bookstore that offers literature from across the entire world, along with pastries, coffee as well. Um, if you can stop in there, they are located in Midtown. Their hours are Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. and Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Then we have DJ Bliss Productions for all of your musical needs, big or small. You can let DJ Bliss take your party, corporate event, or reception to the next level. He specializes in all music genres. You can contact DJ Bliss on Facebook at DJ Bliss or his email address, djbliss717 at aol.com. Always like to make sure we give a shout out to Jay Moore, who has done some great updates to the website. Coach Klee has talked about all the amazing things you can find there, but also just go there to check out what we offer as well. And then last but not least, there is uh, a great scholarship fund um, that is being, I would say, offered. Hopefully I'm saying this right, Coach Klee, um, by Chosen Friends. Um, which is a local Mason group. Uh, they do a scholarship for high school students that are pursuing um, a career in law enforcement. And right now they're doing a popcorn fundraiser. So you can go over to Coach Clee's page called Clark Tint and find out how to purchase popcorn for that amazing cause. And that's all I have for this week's Shayla Showcase. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to uh, add in there. It is not a fundraiser for uh, law enforcement. It's a fundraiser for um, uh, criminal justice. So if you want to be an attorney, uh, district attorney, evidence tech, if you're aspiring to be a judge, anything like that, you, you can go ahead and apply for the scholarship and we're raising funds for that. So if you haven't already done so, the clock is ticking and uh, the time shall soon be up. Go to my page and click the link. And e even if you don't want to buy any of the delicious popcorn that's on there, make that donation. All right. But first and foremost, let me change this over real quick. Bam. I have with us a special guest in the lab today. He's a husband. He's a father. He's an entrepreneur. He's a business owner. He's a community builder. And he's helping to change the atmosphere here in, in, in this local area by doing the things that he's doing. I'll let him explain all that. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce John Bowser. John Bowser, how you doing today? Give him some thumbs up. Give him some thumbs up. Give him some hearts. Give him some likes. Ladies and gentlemen, John, how's it going? I'm doing good, man. How about yourself? I'm doing real good. I'm doing real good. Thank you for coming in the lab and telling everyone to get their pen and their pad. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, first of all, I guess I got to say what my day was. I'm going to go with a zero. Okay, okay. And I've been working from home today, but uh, it's been a change of pace, and I appreciate that. So I, uh -huh. say, I say that I'm working from a zero. But, yep. um, you know, just to kind of introduce myself, as you said, my name is Jonathan Bowser. Um, I'm one of the uh, partners and a managing partner um, of a firm that we created called Integrated Development Partners. Um, you know, we started the firm in uh, 2018 with the vision mm -hmm. that, you know, we really wanted to uh, – you know, change central Pennsylvania from a real estate landscape perspective. You know, I have been, you know, involved in uh, economic development. I was a, you know, previously a, a banker, commercial banker for, for many years. And so I had always been involved in, in the real estate, uh, in the real estate world. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I really wanted to, to, to do something different. Um, I was always more of an entrepreneurial kind of guy willing, willing to take risk. And, um, so we started, you know, three years ago and, uh, you know, three years in, even with the pandemic, you know, we're blessed that uh, that we've been doing very well. So that's a little bit about me. OK. All right. Thank you for sharing. I know you're making your second debut. Uh, this is the first one that's virtual. The first time we did it uh, live uh, face to face. So, uh, some of the questions are, are a reacclimation of from when you were first on. But uh, give us a little bit of uh, background about your schooling and education and what brought you up to, to be in the position that you're in today. Sure. So, you know, I, like I said, I always wanted to, um, you know, I always wanted to do real estate, you know, from even when I was young. Um, and so, you know, I, you know, I played, you know, ball here locally, uh, went to Morgan state, played for a while before, you know, I, um, before I hurt my knee and couldn't play anymore. And, um, you know, I was a political science major, so I was always, uh, you know, I was always into politics, you know, I loved economics. And so I was a political science major with a, with a minor in, in economics. And so, you know, that was, um, you know, so, so kind of economic development, economic empowerment, you know, was always something that was kind of, that was kind of in me. Um, okay. 
And then later, you know, after I graduated and was in uh, banking for a while, I ended up going back and getting my master's. Uh, again, really focusing in on finances and economic development. That's where a lot of my that's where a lot of my passion, you know, is uh, and was at that at that time. But, you know, I always saw, you know, real estate as a way to kind of, um, you know, uh, express myself, you know, almost like an artist does. You know, they, mm -hmm. you know, they have, you know, I'm a big Basquiat fan, but, you know, he, he you know, he expressed himself through art. And for mm -hmm. me, you know, I express myself through projects and through real estate. And, you know, if you look at the kind of projects we do, it kind of reflects, you know, how we want to, you know, see and shape the community kind of moving forward. So, um. So, yeah, you know, that's really that's really what we do. Our focus as far as geographically is, is central PA, um, you know, so we're, we, we have projects in in Harrisburg and Stilton and Hershey and Hanover uh, on the West Shore, you know, all the way to Carlisle. Uh, and, um, you know, we're looking to go a little south uh, or a lot south, maybe into Florida at some point and, and other areas, you know, okay. headed, headed that way. But um. But, you know, I think for, for us, the focus will always be here. My two other partners, you know, they're both from from the area, too. So this is where our heart's at. So this is where our focus will always be. But, uh, you know, we're always looking for other opportunities, too. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That was a nice rendition, a nice rundown. Uh, I see Daryl Brown's on. He's uh, uh, paying attention. He said he's having a good day today. He's watching live from uh, YouTube right now. Um, thank you for tuning in, Daryl. Please tag, like, and share. And so... I know that, that you're one of the partners for Integrated Development Partners, but how did it originally come to be? I mean, I know you were talking, discussing how you were originally a banker, uh, um, and then you, you kind of took the leap and you stepped out. Can you take take us how, how that transition took over? Yeah, so, um, you know, for us it was, you know, I had uh, my one partner, Mike, He uh, he's in the railroad business uh, and, and, you know, did really well for himself, and, you know, he... Uh, started dabbling in real estate he had bought uh allenberry resort that's in cumberland county and uh you know through that you know he and i became you know really close and this is when mm -hmm. i was in economic development so he and i became really close and you know we started talking about you know our our vision you know um for for the area and um you know so that kind of you know we were talking for a while and, and that kind of started to come together a little bit and at the same time, our, our third partner, Justin, he's a uh, he's an engineer. He's a civil engineer. OK. And he had been at different firms over the year and helped, you know, build them up. And, uh, you know, he quite frankly, he just got tired of building up other people's businesses. Uh, and, uh, you know, he wanted to start his start his own business. So for us, you know, we looked at integrated development. That's where the name integrated really comes from. Mm -hmm. that, you know, there's a lot of different dynamics. Most people know us for what we do in real estate, but we also do civil engineering work and we got several, you know, civil engineers that, that, that are part of the team. Uh, we also do uh, building design work. So we do all of our, uh, for the most part, we self perform all of our, uh, our building designs, our, mm -hmm. our layout of our homes, our single family homes, our town homes, um, some of our apartment buildings, some of our commercial buildings. We do all, a lot of that in house, uh, what in house talent. And, um, you know, for us, you know, the, the, the consultant side of it is is really what pays the bills, right? That's that's where we get our cash flow from. That's where we, you know, we make our profits. And then, you know, for me, because um, I'm not an engineer, you know, mm -hmm. we, we take we take those dollars, we take other dollars, you know, that we have investments we have, and then we invest in real estate projects. Um, and that could be from single family homes. We got, you know, two single family home developments that, you know, uh, are currently underway. Uh, we got a townhome community in Hershey uh, that's underway. Uh, we got a couple old buildings that we're converting over. Uh, one being in Hanover it was an old Montgomery Ward building. Okay. One, uh, Salvation Army building uh, in Midtown. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, you know, we got projects like in Stilton where, you know, there was old, old homes that we had to demolish and we mm -hmm. had to clean up the sites because they had environmental issues. And so, you know, we were able to get some money from the state and the county to do those kind of projects. Um, and, and, you know, and now we got uh, a Dollar General building that's ready. They should be opening here in the next couple of months. Uh, we got another medical building that's uh, under construction. We're doing a 45 unit apartment building, um, you know, later this summer. Uh, and then we got a, a medical 
uh, facility that, you know, we should be announcing here in the next couple of weeks that, you know, I think will really be a, um, a game changer for the Stilton, for the Stilton community. Okay. I didn't know that was coming out. Interesting, man. You, 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 you've got your hands full and, and you, you're pretty busy. I know I've seen a couple uh, pictures before where you, you, you were on location, uh, had your family there, you know, uh, uh, that's gotta be a good feeling to actually seeing one of the projects that you've been visualizing and dreaming about They come to, uh, the groundwork, uh, and production, uh, starting to take shape. Yeah, it really is. And then, you know, to have my kids at some level be involved with me is um is definitely special. You know, a lot of times, you know, they'll go with me when we are looking at a property before we even buy it. When they see it, when it, you know, when it looks really bad or it's just, you know, just open space. And then, you know, for them to, to see it throughout the process, to see buildings pop up and, mm -hmm. and to see how it can transform communities. You know, I want them to see, you know, whether or not they want to be in real estate or, or not, that's up to them. Right. I want them to see, you know, what what hard work looks like and how that, you know, can pay off in, in whatever their craft is and that, you know, whatever you want to, you know, you want to be, you can go, you can go do it. You know, I don't think anybody, including myself, you know, at certain points thought, you know, that I, you know, would be able to kind of to, to make the investments that that, you know, uh, myself and my partners are able to make. And, um, you know, I just want them to know and, and, and other people to know that, you know, if you put your mind to it, you work at it, um, you know, you trust the process uh, that, you know, you can make it work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. So let me ask you this. Um, I know you, you've been working on working on these projects uh, before the pandemic hit uh, and through the pandemic. And now that we're at this point of it, how what are the pros and cons that uh, think that you've seen and had to overcome uh, throughout this entire process? Yeah, man, you know, for us, you know, when the pandemic hit, we was like a year and a half, uh, almost two years old, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, and everything just kind of shut down, right? So, mm -hmm. yep. you know, kind of a scary moment for anybody. I don't care if you've been in business 30 years or, or, or two and a half, three years like like we have. Um, you know, I think for us, though, when, when that happened, um, you know, it was, you know, you just, we just sunk in, um, and then we just went to work. We worked even harder, and um you know, I think the good thing about it, and I've seen it with other people too, is, you know, when times get a little hard, like, you know, what we're seeing right now, you know, people get more creative, uh, people uh, yeah. actually more tolerance for risk, because I think you start to realize that in situations like this, if, if I'm a fail, uh, I'd rather fail on my own accord, you know, based on, you know, my dream and my vision. So for us, you know, we double down, you know, a lot of people, uh, stops, you know, construction, um, you know, put a halt to projects, uh, you know, didn't buy anymore. And we did like the complete opposite. You know, we, we, we put, um, you know, we, we expedited stuff, you know, we, we felt comfortable about what we had as far as projects, the land that we owned, we, we felt comfortable about what our vision was. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we, we, we actually accelerated, we bought more, uh, during the pandemic than we had the first two years. Uh, we sold more during the okay. pandemic than we had, you know, earlier. And and I think it was just a testament to 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 me and the people that are around me and my partners to to just be like, you know, let's let's just continue to to, to move on. And um, mm -hmm. you know, I think so far that's paid off well for us. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I see Cindy's on Thank you for tuning in. I see Jametta's on. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please tag, like, and share. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let, let, what is some contact information? Do you have a website? Do you have an email that you would like to put out? If someone wanted to do business with you um, or wanted to uh, brainstorm or anything like that, what, what would be your uh, business contact information? Sure. So, um, you know, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, on, uh, I'm on Facebook. Um, our company uh, website is uh, integrateddp.com. Um, so, you know, contact information is there, uh, email address is there. So, you know, those are the best ways to, um, uh, to reach out. Okay, perfect. I'll make sure that gets tagged in the header above. So if anyone, when anyone's watching the replay, they, they can go ahead and, and have that information as well. Um, but let me ask you this. What gives you the inspiration to get up and, and be motivated to keep going forward, to, you know, th through adversities, through stepping out on your uh, on your own, per se, taking on these risks? What gives you the motivation to continue on moving forward?
Man, that's a, that's a that's a good question because it's, it's 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 probably a combination of a lot, right? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, like you said, taking on risk. When you're in real estate, you know, a lot of times you you take on a lot of um, you take on a lot of financial risk. You take on a lot of debt. Um, you put your own money into to projects, and you're hoping that somebody's going to buy or lease, you know, uh, back from you, so that way you can recoup your your investment and. And a lot of times in real estate, there's like a two year window before that happens. So you, okay. you place it like, uh, you know, the projects that we're thinking about today, you may not hear about for another year or two years. So mm -hmm. that's that's the that's the um, that's the bandwidth of, of being in real estate. It's not like some industries where you you put your investment in, a, you know, today and then three months later, you, you're able to kind of see that. You know, right. It's like a money pit for years before you can ever get an ounce of it back you know mm -hmm. you still got to pay back your bank you still got to you know pay back your original investment before you ever see profit so you know mm -hmm. for people that that want to be in real estate you know you got to be patient you know because it's not a it's not a quick buck uh it, it takes time and and it takes a, a lot of um a lot of risk along the way and a lot of things gotta go you know really gotta go right for you um you know along that path so you know, that's kind of like, that's kind of like the process. So, you know, what, what, what keeps me going, I think, you know, uh, if I had to just think about it is, you know, first my family, right. You, you know, you got to provide for your family. So, right. so that, mm -hmm. that, that definitely keeps me going. Um, the risk, right. I'm, I'm risking, you know, my own, you know, investment. I'm risking, you know, the investment of my partner's. Mm -hmm. Other partners that we bring into it, the banks, right? You know, you got to pay your, you got to pay your, uh, your, your debt back to the banks plus mm -hmm. interest, um, and so you know, uh, all of that kind of sits with me. But then I think, you know, even kind of bigger than that, you know, it's 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 also about the community too. You know, um, you know, we got in this to make money, so you know, that's that's important. Don't get me wrong, but you know, we also feel, I also feel like, you know, we can be impactful in other ways through through what we do. So. You know, when we see like projects like Stilton as a great example um, where, you know, you can come into the community, you can invest money, you can get others to invest money and you can really change the lives of people. You know, I think that that's critically important. And so, you know, those are the things that I think about, you know, on days where I don't feel like getting up, you know, at 4.30 yeah. or 5 in the morning and I don't feel like working at 10 o'clock at night. You know, those are the things that probably uh, the most kind of keep me motivated. Gotcha. That makes sense, man. That's good advice, too. Yeah, trust me, I understand. There's days when you, you really don't feel like getting up early. It's cold outside. The bed feels too good. Days when you're tired and you want to turn it in and you got to you got to you got to burn that midnight oil and get things done. Yeah. I see Jamon's on. Thank you for tuning in. He, he's we were just talking about him. He's in Dallas, Texas. Hope everything's good for you, man. Hope you're remaining safe and warm and, and the family's OK. He said, what's up to you, John? What's up? What's up? Yeah. So let, what advice would you give if you could go back in time uh, and you could see um, the the John Bowser from 10 years ago uh, and you could have a face-to-face -face conversation with him? What, what kind of advice would you give him? Um, you know, learn from your mistakes and learn from your setbacks, right? You know, um, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a big believer now in that, you know, all things happen for a reason. So you know, just like, you know, everybody else, you know, you have setbacks, you have doors that, you know, shut in, in, in front of you, in front of your face. And, and, you know, I was one to always take that very uh, personally, you know what I mean? And, you know, you start second guessing yourself and thinking like, was it me? Did I do something wrong? Or could I have done something different? And, um, you know, now I, I say that, you know, as of 10 years later, you know, that's not really there anymore. You know, when, when, when mistakes happen and they do, they happen for me, they happen every day. Um, you know, I just try to learn from them um, and, and improve on them and, and see it as a, a way for me. You know, when you win, people, you typically don't reflect as much. But when you yeah. lose, oh, you yeah. lose the things, right? So you, you yeah. think about it and you think you replay it in your mind, like, what could I have done different? I could have done this. And, and so I take those opportunities, man, and I just really try to, you know, I really try to learn from it. Um, and I think that that's probably the, the biggest thing that, I've seen different, um, you know, from from me ten years ago to to me now. The other thing is probably just, um, you know, just being, you know, just 
brutally honest up front. You know, a lot of times, you know, you 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 want to do well, you want to you know perform your best, you you want to put your best foot forward. But I think just being really honest with yourself about, you know, what your capabilities are, your capacity is, uh -huh. and, and and the ability to say no sometimes to be like, you know, I just I'm sorry, I wish I could help you, I wish I could do that, but you know, it just it's not fitting with my program right now. So I think I think those are the things that over over the time that you know I've learned uh you know from 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 my journey probably over the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good, good. And I'm a, I got a second part to that question real quick, but I, I'm a, uh, I'm a pause real quick to say that Tammy Dykes is on. She absolutely said motivation is the key. I want to give her a shout out and thank you that uh, Shayla and I was able to be on her show that aired on Valentine's Day, uh, uh, Venus versus Mars. Uh, and so when, when you see that ad show up, make sure you tune in, tag, like, and share to her show. We had a lot of fun on her show. Thank you very much. Got to get that plug out there. <laughs> but the second part of the question, John, so let me, let me, if someone's watching this video right now, or they're watching the replay and they didn't know who you were and they never heard of you or heard of anything that you've done. And they're watching this and they're astonished and they're looking at you like, I want to be, I want to grow up and be just like him. Uh, when I grow up, what kind of advice would you give them? Uh, never give up, you know, grind it out. Uh, you know, you're going to have a lot of good days and bad days, but, um, you know, trusting yourself for me is, is trusting in the Lord that, you know, he's, he's over watching my, you know, he's over overseeing my steps, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, putting it in his hands, man. Like, you know, a lot of times, you know, when I sit back and, and things happen throughout the course of the day, you know, a lot of it, I don't have any control over. And that's where I, I had to learn to kind of let go uh, mm -hmm. uh, of that and, and, and give it to the Lord to handle it for me. And a lot of times it, it, it works out, right. It works out the way it's supposed to, maybe not that right. day, but in the long haul, it all kind of works out. So, you know, that, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's having trust in the man upstairs, um, you know, having trust in myself uh, and just just grinding it out, man. I mean, you know, it's it's tough. It's, it's not an easy road uh, for whatever your craft is, whatever your passion is. And, Clea, I know you and I was just talking about that before, we, you know, before, we mm -hmm. realized, you know, even your journey um, is it's tough, you know. And, um, you know, I just say that to anybody, um, just trust in yourself because there's going to be people who are going to doubt you along the way. Uh, but as long as you trust in yourself and you're willing to work hard, um, and I always tell people, I may not be the smartest guy in the room uh, or in the crowd, nor do I uh, I want to be or need to be because I'm in the wrong crowd, if that's the case. True. But, but I'm going to work as hard as anybody else in the room. Uh, and, and I always look for who is the hardest working you know, person around me. And my goal is to match that level of energy. And I feel like if I can do that, then I could be, you know, as successful as, you know, what is planned to be. Good advice. And you said a lot of uh, golden nuggets in that. And, and one of them that uh, I, I learned uh, real early in life and I didn't understand it until I became older. It was one thing my grandfather said, if you're the smartest person in your group, then you need to find a new group. And I mean, I know that it's been a, a catchphrase for a lot of motivational speaking, but it's very true because if, if you're, you, you, then that means you're surrounded by a whole bunch of yes men or people who aren't going to uh, uh, challenge you. Um, it, you. You need to have someone who will challenge you, someone who may have more experience than you, who are, is quote unquote smarter than you. That way you can still grow. You're still grinding. You still, you still have that work ethic because you have something to strive for and something to prove itself. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, you know, a lot of times, man, when you, you know, you, you get around certain people and it's those little hidden gems. It's, it's the mm -hmm. small stuff. You know what I mean? It's the small mm -hmm. stuff that you can learn uh, from certain people uh, that I think can help you take, you know, that next leap. You know, for me, even when I look at, you know, the, the, the people that kind of inspired me along the way, it's, it's probably not the people you think. You know, it was, the, it was just the person that gave me that little small golden yep. nugget uh that you know i kind of reflected on and i'm like wow you know it kind of it kind of really helps you uh along the way for sure yeah it does Sure. I know Demond just said that uh, uh, definitely the, the, these facts are spot on. Gary Grant, Grant saying facts, absolutely. Tammy Dykes is saying grow up, and, and Shayla said great advice. I got a couple. I think someone said something on YouTube as well, but I can't see that one. I missed that one. Sorry, my apologies. <laughs> So you gave advice on what you would talk about uh, uh, to the younger version of yourself and up and comers. Uh, but 
let's let's kind of change gears a little bit. What kind of goals? Where do you see yourself? Where do you see your company in about three to five years, five to ten years? Anything that you can share with us? Yeah, so like um, you know, I, I I'm more focused on um, you know, short term goals. So I, I I'm more of a you know, I have like a little daily planner that's with me every day, right? And so, you know, I plan out you know, my week, and then I plan out my day, uh, you know, every morning. And so, you know, I really focus on, um, you know, those kind of, um, you know, short term, short term goals, long term, man, you know, who, who knows, you know, I'm hoping that we're still around, I'm hoping that we're still impactful. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we'll see where where things go uh, from from there. But, um, it, you know, for me, it's, it's the it's the daily stuff that I, that I really focus on. And, and as you know, you know, opportunities come and go. And, you know, if you sit back and ask yourself, you know, what your goals were 10 years ago and yeah. what you now and compare it, you know, maybe you were spot on, man, but I haven't been spot on yet um, <laughs> with, with, with any of it. But, you know, I think just kind of the more the more principal things. Right. I'm, I'm hoping that I'm still I'm, I'm hoping I'm still me. I hope I'm hoping I'm still growing. I'm hoping I'm still learning. Um, you know, I learned from from other people, from entrepreneurs, um, mm -hmm. young, you know, that are younger than me, less experienced than me, more experienced than me. Mm -hmm. um, and I, if, if 10 years from now, I'm still in a place to where I, I want to learn and I want to grow. Um, I'm cool with that. I think you will be. I, I know you got your site set and basically how you were talking with the real estate investment uh, is kind of like a money pit or a seed. You know, you're you're if you're planting for a, a pl uh, if you're. If, bearing a seed to grow for the season, then what you're doing is not for that moment, is not for what you need to do. You're planting oak trees. You're, you're planting things that need to bamboo, that take time to grow. You, you planted that seed and you need to let uh, uh, the, the nature take its course and, and it for to germinate and go through the uh, growth process itself. No doubt. No and doubt. No doubt. And I got to put a correction out there. I'm sorry, Tammy. I misquoted you when I was reading too fast. She says she wants to be like John when she grows up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's my fault. That's my fault. So we talked about uh, a bunch of goals. And I know you you talk, gave us a little bit about your history and what you're doing and where you're looking to go. But are there any books or stories or people that have influenced you or changed you throughout the course of, of you um, becoming an entrepreneur and growing? Yeah, so I mean, you probably noticed a little bit about me, but I am a book. I am a bookworm. Um, mm -hmm. As I said, I'm a political science major. So, so like two books that uh, you know my professor down at Morgan, um, you know, really implanted in me is, and I think I might have said this on your last on your last show. Mm -hmm. The last time I was on was uh, Machiavelli the Prince. That's that's definitely uh, you know probably my number one my number one book, and I, I probably read it once a year. And it's a short read, so it doesn't really take long. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one. Um, the wealth, the wealth of the nations, is is another one that's um, you know is is good. And that that book's more of a, a blend between politics and economics, and you know the value of of wealth and how you gain wealth, and how you know early on um, how nations uh, like the United States became you know the most wealthiest nations. Uh, you know, on, on the planet and, and, um, and, and how that trickles down to, to individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are two, uh, you know, those are two books that, that uh, probably have um, influenced me to, you know, the, the most, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here in my, in my home office, but, you know, right now I'm reading uh, Daring Greatly. So this is, this is. Okay. Brene Brown. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. That's, that's a good one. And then, you know, of course me being kind of the history political science person I am. I got a book called First Principles. Okay. Uh, what America's founders learned from the Greeks and Romans and how they mm. shaped our country mm -hmm. by Thomas Ricks. So that's that's another book that that I'm that you know that I'm I'm currently reading. Well, I'm reading both of them so I kind of go back and forth between between the two because I can't just focus on one. <laughs> so um so those are the two that that I'm reading at the moment. But um you know uh, those that the, the the other two that I mentioned are probably the ones that have had the most uh, you know influence. Extreme ownership is another one mm -hmm. that's okay. up there, um, and I would definitely recommend that one as well. So, 
Okay, good. And, and he's given knowledge as well. I, I remember we talked uh, many times uh, on books that we compared notes on books that we read and uh, how we are often, uh, I can I, I often read two books at the same time too. For one, to get through the book list that I have. Uh, for for two, just to uh, uh, learn and grow from all that knowledge. And so I often read a chapter of one and maybe a chapter of two, a different book on that same day, or split them. And, and I, I try to get these books done in a timely manner, but also learn from them as yeah. well. So, and, you know, and audio, the audio book helps too. Yeah, the, game. all of these I get the audio too, so I can, you know, if I'm at the gym or if I'm on the way, mm -hmm. I'm in the car, or whatever the case may be. So, yeah, that's what I was doing. I was listening to an Earl Nightingale book in a hyper a hyperbaric chamber yesterday. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Sylvia's old. Thank you for tuning in. She said that's an excellent book. Talking about one of the books that you were, you go ahead, you went ahead and shout it out. Yeah. And one of the books that I know we discussed before was The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. That was a game changer for me. I I, I revisit that. Um, I read it twice, but I revisit it yearly um, just to pick up golden nuggets and, and things. And uh, the, it's a simple but amazing story. And if you haven't read it, I, I would suggest it, um, you do sometime. I think that's a game changer as well. Some books is like the, they almost like the Bible, right? You know, you yeah. read the Bible 10 times, you know, 15, 20 times. And every time you read it, you, you find something that you didn't even see you mm -hmm. know, last time or before. So, you know, yeah, I got like one or two of them that regardless, I just read, like, it seems like every year and I pick up mm -hmm. something new that I didn't even pick up the last time. Yeah, and each time you read it, it seems uh, some parts are a little redundant, but like you said, the other parts are a game changer. Like oh, you pick yeah. up what you need for that moment. Like, wow, I didn't read it like that that the first yeah, time. Around. Yeah, something in your life changed, you know, and, mm -hmm. and now you, you read it and it, it just hits you different. That's resonating. Yeah, you become a better version of yourself. I see yeah. Ennis Murphy's on. Thank you for tuning in. Please tag, like, and share. Uh, Audible is amazing. Gary Grant said that as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, it. it I, I stood in line to go vote. Uh, and I listened to an audio book and the line was so long that I got to f start and finish uh, an audio book right there in line. While everyone else was talking, I, I got to do my thing. So <laughs> audible, audio book it can be the game changer that, that you can turn your car into a drive time studio on your way into wherever you need to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see Maddie's on. Thank you for tuning in. Please tag, like, and share. But right now, we talked about a bunch of uh, wonderful different things. Talk about you being an entrepreneur, the properties that you're, uh, the projects that you're working on, the projects that you have worked on, um, the contact information, inspiration. We talked about goals. But is there anything else that we may have, uh, I may have missed or forgot to, to ask you? Right now, the floor is yours. If there's anything that you'd like to share with us. No, I think... Um... You know, I think you hit on all the all the key points that you know we discussed on uh, you know prior to. So, you know, if there's something else you you know you want to talk about it, I'm I'm, I'm game. So, all right, cool. I, I I hit all my questions. I mean, I enjoy having you on the show. I mean, I know we're we're friends as well. Uh, uh, we didn't get to hang out as much um, this past football season or this past year due to circumstances. Uh, I but I anyway though. Huh. I didn't want to anyway. My team's not. My team's oh, not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I don't want to hear from you right now. I wouldn't want to hear. I mean, football season's over now, so we could be a little bit more cordial. Yeah, yeah, it could be cordial now, but you know, when I'm when, when we're down and y'all are up, that's not a that's not a that's, that's a great thing. That's a great, and that's a that's a realistic thing. That's a more realistic thing. So you you're about to bring out the other side of Cleet Tillman, right? The competitive side of Cleet Tillman <laughs> in this well, conference. I, still worry, I do I do know one of your favorite spots. And I don't know what team that they support, so you know what I mean. I, I'm a little, I'm a little confused on where your loyalty that, that, is. But. That, that's just out of circumstances and location. Yeah. I can't control any of that, and I don't go there on game day or just for that reason because that atmosphere on that time would not be beneficial for me. Circumstance and situation. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for throwing all that in there, all that needless information. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I see. And, uh, and ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't already known that we were just before we uh, the cameras went on, we were talking about football, too. And his he's an Eagle fan. So, you know, we were discussing the, the trade of Carson Wentz and, and the future for the Eagles as well. So I, I believe he, you've been very optimistic about that. Now people are chiming in about being the Steelers. And all. See, not no, 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 we're not doing that. What Steeler fans do, man. They just chime in. Yeah, yeah, rude, rude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
No. See, see, at least with me with Baltimore, though, I can, I, you know, again, I lived in Baltimore for six years, so there, there's a there's a small little you know place for for the Ravens in, in okay. me, you know, and and I was down there when they was when they went in 2000, 2001? You know, in 2000, 2012, and we should have had these last two years, but that's just my opinion. We should have, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, yeah. It don't it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. Yeah, they were now yeah, we're changing gears, you know. But yeah, we should have. We should yeah. have. Yeah, what years? Like, what years did you guys win? Uh, we won in uh, 2018. Oh, a uh, singular. So, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I thought you were gonna say something plural. It was a singular, but we looking we looking into the future. <laughs> <laughs> once, we, once we once we can get once we can pay off Wentz's 30 30 million <laughs> debt that we got to pay off. You know what I mean? Then, then we'll look to the future. And and Jalen Hurts is that future, huh? I don't know yet. Not proven. Okay. All right. All right. I like. I like. I like his. Um. I like the possibility, but. But you know, not proven. Yeah. Yeah. I. I. I to say the least, I think it, it'll be an interesting season, and to watch him develop throughout this upcoming season to see what happens. Yeah. No doubt. I agree. Yeah. Well, well, thank you for coming on the show. And anything else that you would like to say, real quick? Nah, man, I just appreciate you. Appreciate you, you know, having me on again. Um, you know, uh, I, I like when I could, you know, come in and, and talk and, um, you know, hopefully uh, be able to, you know, help, uh, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, some of your listeners out or, you know, um, whatever the case may be. You know, I know I listen in, you know, to, to, to some of them as well. Mm -hmm. um, some of the people you have on and, um, you know, it's just those hidden gems and, you know, that I could pick up from, from other people as well. So, so I appreciate you, you know, having me on and, uh, you know, look forward to being back hopefully, uh, you know, sooner than later. Absolutely. Absolutely. And before we go, I see, uh, Gary Grant asked you a, a question. Um, does your company work with private investors? Um, yes and no. So like, you know, um, you know, for us, you know, a lot of, a, real, a lot of real estate people go out and they seek private investors, um, and, um, you know, that's how they raise the necessary capital to do projects for, mm -hmm. for us. Um, you know, we we've been fortunate enough to, uh, you know, kind of keep that circle real small of, okay. of investors. Um, and, um, you know, uh, you know, a big thing for us is, you know, when we're successful with one project, you know, we take a lot of, um, you know, what I would call like re up money. And we mm -hmm. take a lot of that and we dump it right back in. To, to our projects and so you know um you know that's kind of how our, our model is set up um a lot of times when you do go and raise you know private equity either it's through wall street firms or mm -hmm. even you know uh, a successful business person or someone who retired and you know has a decent you know savings to to invest a lot of times you know that cost of funds can be high um because you know for instance, Clee, if I come to you and I say, hey, you know, invest in, you know, this project and, you know, my ask to you is $100,000, but this isn't what you do for, a, you know, uh, a living, you know, you're, you're, that's a high risk for you probably mm -hmm. because I really don't have a strong guarantee that I'm going to be able to, you know, repay you back. So you may look at it and say, okay, well, I could put my money in the stock market right now and get, you know, eight or 9%. Mm -hmm. You know, so that means for me to be able to get you to want to invest with me outside of me getting you comfortable, you might say, well, you know, um, I, I want 12 or I want 15 percent. I want 16 mm percent. -hmm. And, um, you know, and, and that's of, of, of the profit or that could be, you know, you making them some level of a interest payment, et cetera. And so that can get kind of costly, you know. And so for us, you know, we've tried to be smart and, and not. Uh, I want to. I want to. I don't want to say smart. We we've tried to be um, thoughtful in how we uh, you know do projects and try to limit you know having what we call high cost of funds. Okay. Uh, to be able to do stuff. So we rely you know on our on our own cash on our own capital, uh, and we rely on banks. You know you can go get money from a bank right now at three percent. Hmm. That's cheap funds compared mm -hmm. to if I had to pay you fifteen percent. You know. Right. Um, and so, you know, that's one way that, you know, we invest 
And, you know, I'll also say that if you do go to private investors, it's always best if you can go to like a small group of people who really believe in your vision. Mm -hmm. So that way, instead of you paying them 15%, maybe they're cool with 5% and they're cool with that being patient, meaning that, you know, they're not looking for you to make them an interest payment every month. You know, right. they say, well, I'll be cool if I don't get repaid for three years or two years. And how about you just give me 5% uh, on, on my money or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would always advise somebody that gets into real estate and I often do is, you know, start with family, friends, um, you know, start with uh, people that, you know, you have a relationship with or mm -hmm. look to grow a relationship with mm -hmm. and, um, you know, see if you can get money that is inexpensive and that is patient. Uh, so then that way you can, you know, see a successful project through and not be worried about having to pay that individual every month some expensive amount of money um, just to get the project done. So that's kind of how we, you know, that's kind of how we, how we look at stuff. And then for us too, it's like we, we um, you know, we always say we want winners and losers every year. Mm -hmm. and, you know, people always laugh that, um, you know, at Donald Trump for not paying no taxes. And, and all he did was work the system. Right. If you look at, you know, his his history, he would have projects that would do really well. And then he had projects to do really bad. Mm -hmm. and so all his projects that would do really well that, you know, he should pay taxes on. He was able to write it off by all the projects he did really bad. And so, you know, that's. You know, because it, it, that's the other thing is that, you know, if you if you make a hundred bucks, you know, you want to pay 30 to 40 percent of that to Uncle Sam. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if you're taking all the risk, uh, you you putting in all the work and then at the end of the day, you've got to pay, you know, 30 to 40 percent of that to the government. Yeah. Who knows what they doing with my money anyway? Yeah. Um, and, and so, you know, I, I always tell people outside of real estate and outside of, you know, making sure that you. Um, select your investors well. Also, invest in a, a, a good uh, attorney and invest in a good accountant that can help you minimize your tax liability. Hmm. Not, not to do nothing illegal, <laughs> but to minimize it because, you know, if, if again, using that same scenario, if you make $100 and you, you giving, and I'm giving 40% of it to Uncle, Uncle Sam, mm -hmm. but through good tax planning, you only giving ten percent to Uncle Sam. You're ahead. Yeah, yeah. You know, I always, I always advise people. Um, you know, invest in a good uh, tax uh, accountant. You know, invest in a good uh, attorney. Mm -hmm. Invest in a good financial advisor and make them your team. Okay. Um, and and um and, and whether you're in real estate or whether you're in any other kind of business as an entrepreneur, period. You know, that was something that somebody dropped on me a long time ago when I said I want, you know, I wanted to go out and do my do my own thing was, mm -hmm. you know, we invested in in that core group, you know, from day one. So right. Now we didn't have those kind of hiccups along the way. There we go, man. You you answered that question tremendously. Gary said, yes, very smart. He totally agrees. Absolutely. I think you hit the nail on the head with that. See, that was a good question, Gary. Thank you for chiming in right when we were about to shut down. You asked a real important question. Yeah, yeah. So I look forward to this is round two of you being on the show. So maybe this time next year or whatever, I look forward to having you back on the show sometime. No doubt, man. I, you know, like I said, man, I appreciate you having me on. I definitely, you know, will will always come back. Um, Thank and, you. Um, you know, looking looking forward to it, man. And and, I, and for you, congratulations. You know. Um, you know, what you're doing is not easy, you know, right. and so, uh, you know, I know a lot goes into that. I know a lot of the time, you know, that you put into it, um, like you said earlier, you know, this is your passion. So, you know, I think, um, you know, kudos to you, man. Keep, keep right. grinding, keep doing what you're doing. And, uh, you know, you got a lot of support behind you. So, um, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. Congratulations. Thank you. It feels good to hear it. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. And to add on to that, you know, John, I do these shows be, uh, to put on to put on. You understand? You know? And I <laughs> have to say this, because if you're watching out there and you, you got a business, a product, or a positive message, and you're looking to get that information out there, let me know. Inbox me, text me, get a hold of me. Uh, hit the, the website, workwithclee.com. Let me go ahead and get that up there quick. One of these banners while I'm talking about that. There we go. 
hit that website, inbox me, text me, get a hold of me. If you've got a business product or positive message, I'll schedule you a time to get you on the show. We'll get that information out there and we'll have fun while we do it. Okay. And I want everyone to, to stay safe. I want everyone to stay warm in the states that are affected by uh, the severity of the snow. Be healthy, be safe, uh, take care of each other, and let us know if there's anything we can do to help you guys out. We want to help you out as best we can. I want everyone to live their life with the purpose. I want everyone to evolve so hard. I got a special gift uh, for you, John, for coming on the show. I can't give it to you, but I'll make sure that you get it. I'll get that information, that gift to you, but I do have a special guest coming on the show next week. Do you know who it is? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you just got to tune in and see. <laughs> <laughs> got him, got him. Got but I, that one. You got to be on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you're on the hook now. You're on the hook because I'm going to call you out next week if you're not on, see? <laughs> <laughs> But I, again, I appreciate you. I appreciate you guys. Make sure you stay stay healthy. Wash your hands. Uh, we're going to get through all this the, with the weather. We're going to get through all this with the pandemic, and we're going to be successful. We're going to evolve so hard. But we got to end the show doing one more thing. You remember what it is, John? Uh, we got to hit the money you, dance. You told, you told me at the beginning, too, man. I can't even remember. We got to do the money dance. Hit them with the money dance. Thank you. Thank you. Here we go. Thank you guys for tuning in. It's your motivational speaker, your empowerment coach, your author, and your favorite baker's favorite baker, Coach Cleek, coming at you. Love everybody. Have a good night. Peace.